Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pinion. I bring you today's word for August 24th, 2016. Uh, this message is part of a series entitled Refine Focus, where all year long we've been learning to recalibrate our focus so that we can become the men and women God has called us to be. Now, we've been studying this parable. It's the, what I call the mother of all parables, the parable of the sower, and we've been studying it for months. Now, I want to go back to it this morning. Uh, not only did Jesus give the parable, but his disciples asked for an explanation of the parable, and he provided it. That's what I'm about to read to you with a message entitled, The Love of Money. This is what Jesus said. The farmer, because he talked about four different types of soil. He said the farmer is like someone who plants God's teaching down inside of people. However, sometimes the teaching falls along the path, and that's like the people that receive the word of God, but they don't understand it, and because they don't understand it, Satan comes immediately and snatches away the word that's sown in their heart. Now, other people are like the seed that's planted on rocky ground. Now, these people uh, have a thin layer of soil, a lot of rock, so they quickly and gladly accept the word of God, but they don't allow the word to go deep into their lives, and because of it, when trouble comes or persecution comes because of the word, then they're quick to give up. Other people are like seed that's planted on thorny ground or, or, or ground that has thorny weeds. Now, these people, they hear the teaching, but their lives become full of other things, uh, the cares of this world, the love of money, and everything else they want. And those things, those things are weeds that keeps the word from growing. And then lastly, other people are like seed that's planted on good ground, and they receive it, and it produces a harvest, sometimes 30 times more, sometimes 60 times more, and even sometimes 100 times more. Now, for days now, we've been focusing in on the phrase, the love of money. And that's obviously the title of today's message. Many Christians don't like to talk about money, uh, but the Bible actually says more about money than it does about heaven. It says more about money than it does about hell. So we need to talk about it, especially as it relates to having a proper relationship with money, right? So what you don't want to have is an improper love towards money. Money in and of itself is not evil. I would venture to say <laughs> that not having money is evil. Now, the only way you can say that money is evil is if you've never been poor. But if you've been poor before and you know that not ha having money, now that's evil. Uh, but it's the love of money. Uh, 1 Timothy 6 and 10, Paul said to his son, it's the love of money that's actually the root of all evil. Uh, Paul said, let me just read that to you. 1 Timothy uh, 6 and 10, I'm going to read it to you from the easy to read version. Uh, Paul said to his son, the love of money causes all kinds of evil. Some people have turned away from what we believe because they want to get more and more and more money. But they have caused themselves a lot of pain and sorrow. Actually, Solomon said in Proverbs 10 that the Lord can make you rich. And if the Lord makes you rich, he adds no sorrow with it. But if you're pursuing earthly you know, possessions uh, with your own human ability and strength, then yeah, it's caused people a lot of sorrow. They have money, but then money has them. And then they're in a bad state. So what does this mean to you today? I have three things to share with you. Uh, this morning, I believe they're going to be a blessing to you. Here we go. Number one, God is not opposed to you having earthly possessions. I've told you this before. God doesn't, it doesn't bother God for you to have things. He'll actually bless you with the things. He just doesn't want the things to have you. God is not opposed to you having earthly possessions. Now, here's the thing, though, that it's, it's strange to me. I've seen Christians tear down other Christians for the things that they've accumulated, you know, for the earthly possessions that they have. And when God is not opposed to having things, actually, in most cases, God blessed them with those things. So God, God will bless you with the things that you desire. God will give you the desire for it, and then he'll even bless you with the thing. God is not opposed to that. But God is always looking at your heart. If you look at 1 Samuel 16 and 7, we, we serve a God. He, uh, uh, God was explaining to the prophet that, listen, in this world, people look at the outward appearance, but I'm looking at the heart. I'm examining the heart. And so some people in this world have a problem with other people having things, even Christians, and they'll tear them down. You shouldn't be driving that car or that house is too big or, you know, whatever. You spent too much, too much money on this. I don't know who made the rules on what the limits are. You know, uh, God is a God of no limits. Uh, at the end of the day, God is going to judge those people concerning what's in their heart. And so you need to keep your heart right towards God, your heart right concerning money, and your heart right towards other people. Don't allow envy to get a hold of your heart. Number two, God can give you wealth. Now, Solomon is a good example. God gave him wisdom and God gave him wealth. He was an ultra billionaire by the grace of God. God made him the richest man on the planet, period, hands down. And this is what he said in Ecclesiastes chapter five, verses 18 through 20. Solomon said, a standing billionaire, richest man on the planet said this, I have seen what is best for people to do on the earth. Now they should eat drink, 
and enjoy the work they have during the short time they're here. Listen, we're not here for a long time. And God, hey, you might as well enjoy the life that God has given you. God is not saved. Don't, God doesn't want you to be saved and miserably saved. God wants you to be saved. Jesus came that you would have life and enjoy it, that you would have and enjoy the life that he provided you. Solomon went on to say, God has given them these few days, and it's all they have. If, if God, this is what Solomon says, if God gives some people wealth, property, and the power to enjoy those things, then they should enjoy them. They should accept the things they have and enjoy the work because this is a gift from God. Listen, God blesses some people with wealth, property, and the power to enjoy it. So they should enjoy those things. There's nothing wrong with enjoying all God places in your hands. So if you're a believer, stop talking about other believers who God has blessed. Don't tear them down. If they enjoy it, let them enjoy it. That's between them and God. God is going to examine their heart. And if their heart is in the right place, then God is going to continue to bless them. Watch this. God will even give them more. So you, and if you're the person that God has blessed with wealth and power uh, uh, and property and the power to enjoy it, then enjoy it. God, God will bless you with things. Just don't develop an improper love for things. You know, like, in the U.S., people are just enamored with houses and cars. So let me just use that as an example. God has blessed us with houses, right, Isabella and I. So, yes, enjoy your house or houses. Enjoy it. But don't love your house. Love God. I mean, so, you know, this thing, this message is about the love of money. Don't love your house. Love God. Enjoy your house, but don't love it. God gives you all things richly to enjoy just don't develop, develop an improper love for those things. If you start loving your house, now some people have loved their house over loving God to the point where now their house is keeping them from the God who blessed them with it. Same thing with cars. God will bless, we have cars, cars, plural, and God will bless you with cars. Praise God for that. Enjoy your car, but don't love your car. Love God. Don't love the car. It's just a car. Enjoy it though. I mean, I and when I drive around, I've said this before, Every once in a while, I'm driving my car, and I'm like, man, God, thank you. I enjoy this car. Now, I don't love the car. I'm not going to allow the car to keep me from God. How could I allow the, the car to keep me from the God who blessed me with the car? But some people do that. They, instead of worshiping on Sunday, instead of being in Bible study, instead of hearing from God, instead of doing what God is telling them to do, it's like they're, you know, they're so caught up in this car or this house or these things, whatever it is. At the end of the day, don't get caught up in the thing and walk away from the God who blessed you with the thing, that's crazy. That's the love of money. And that's having an improper relationship with money. Number three, and finally, don't criticize others for the wealth God has blessed them to attain. God is going to judge their heart. And if God tests their heart, and their heart is in the right place concerning money, then God, watch this, much to your chagrin, will give them more. So don't allow envy to fill your heart and cause you to be upset with someone who has what you don't have. Allow God to judge their heart, and then you need to search your own heart. Allow God, God to judge your own heart. Uh, at the end of the day, here's the bottom line. You have an assignment. They have an assignment. Whatever that assignment is, that's between them and God. You have an assignment. How about you worry about your own assignment? Concern yourself with your divine assignment. God will give you everything you need to accomplish your divine assignment, and, you know, well, God will give you your needs, not your wants. I don't know what you know, people that say crazy stuff like that, they haven't read the Bible. No, God will give you this above. We serve a God who blesses us profusely, not because we deserve it, but because he's so good. So yes, God will give you everything you need to accomplish your divine assignment. And watch this, newsflash, he will even give you lots of things that you want. He will give you the desire, he will give you the want, and then bless you with the thing that you want. But your heart needs to be right concerning money. Your heart, you have to have a proper relationship with money. Because if you don't, if your heart is not right where money is concerned, then God can't trust you with things. He can't give it to you because he knows that as soon as he gives it to you, you're going to turn away from him. But when he knows that he can give it to you and you won't turn away from him, then there's nothing that he won't, uh, that he will withhold from you. So open up your heart, examine yourself, search your heart this morning, and just make sure that you have a proper relationship with money. Because if you do, then get ready to walk in the blessing. If God can trust you with it, then God will release it to you. So let's close this out with a declaration of faith. I want you to open up your mouth and declare this over your own life by faith. You ready? Say this. Say, Father, this is a season of refined focus for me. I bring my life into focus where money is concerned. I don't allow money to cause my heart to go astray. 
you can bless me with wealth, Father, because I will use the wealth you place in my hands for kingdom purposes. I don't love my house. I'm thankful for it and I enjoy it. I don't love my car, but I drive it and I enjoy it as I drive it to and fro. I love you and I'm thankful for all the earthly possessions you've blessed me with. My heart is in the right place concerning money. So Father, I declare that you can trust me with more. I will never develop a love for money. Money is a tool. You are my Lord and I will never confuse the two. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Sign up and get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. As you head into this day, don't love money. Love God. And if you love God instead of loving money, then God can bless you with lots of money. God bless you.